This video is brought to you by XRIART. More about them later in the video. So this is the iPhone 10, the first $1,000 iPhone. But thankfully that was back in 2017. Now you can actually buy this phone for a few hundred dollars. But the question is, should you? Well, I've been using this phone for the past two weeks and I think in 2021 and moving into 2022, this is a good phone, but it's not great because it has some drawbacks. So let's talk about them. We're starting with the design and build quality. So when it comes to design, I think Apple did a great job. I really like how this phone looks, feels, and fits in my hands. I don't have huge hands, but for the most part, I feel like I can use this phone with just one hand. There are no sharp edges or corners or anything that would make this phone uncomfortable to hold, which is great. Now, in terms of durability, this phone has Gorilla Glass on both the front and back, and the frame of this phone is made from stainless steel. But did you know that this was not actually the first iPhone with a stainless steel frame? The iPhone 4 was. I did not know that. But anyways, this phone is also IP67 water and dust resistant, which is less than IP68, but I wouldn't say this is a drawback because I believe IP67 should be enough for most people, including myself. So it's a small difference, but it's certainly worth mentioning. The bezels around the screen are also very thin, which makes this phone look more premium than an iPhone XR, for example. Now, speaking of the screen on this phone, it was one of the best in 2017, and it's still better than most iPhones out there. This phone has a better screen than the iPhone XR, 11, SE2, the iPhone 8, and all older iPhones. This really says a lot about the screen on this phone because there are so many iPhones out there, but the fact that this screen is better than most of them must mean that this is a great screen. And well, it is. The iPhone X has a really high quality 5.8 inch OLED screen with a resolution of 2436 by 1125 pixels, which is close to 1440p. It has a 1 million to 1 contrast ratio and it supports HDR content. Now, if you have no idea about what exactly these fancy numbers and words mean, to put it simply, this is an amazing display. The viewing angles are great, it has a lot of contrast, it's color accurate and very sharp, it gets bright enough to be visible outdoors and it gets dark enough to not be harsh on your eyes at night. And honestly, one of you can argue that this phone has a better screen than some of the newer iPhones because it has 3D touch. I often see you guys talking about this in the comments and it seems like a lot of you like 3D touch and would prefer to buy a phone with 3D touch. And in all honesty, I wouldn't disagree with you. I think 3D touch was great and it made iPhones more different than all other phones in a good way. So the iPhone 10 has 3D touch, but sadly it's not all that useful anymore because Apple kinda disabled it through software updates. Now this phone has a 60 hertz screen, so obviously it won't be as smooth as screens with a higher refresh rate, but don't worry, I don't think this is a drawback because one, the price of this phone, and two, the fact that most of you watching right now will likely be switching to this phone from a phone that doesn't have a high refresh rate screen, so it won't really matter. Now let's talk about the processor inside this phone, arguably one of the most important components inside any phone. It's the thing that makes this phone feel as smooth and as responsive as it is. So the iPhone 10 is equipped with Apple's A11 Bionic processor and has three gigs of RAM, which may not sound like a lot because yes, the amount of RAM this phone has is definitely on the lower side, even for an iPhone. And I would probably consider this to be a drawback, but it's not a big one because Using this phone feels no different than an iPhone with 4 gigs of RAM. You may occasionally notice this phone having a hard time keeping as many apps open in the background as some iPhones with more RAM, but if I'm being honest, I did not notice a difference. But do note that in this area, I'm mostly comparing this phone to an iPhone XS because that's what I use as my daily driver. Now, when it comes to actual performance, I have nothing to complain about considering the price of this phone. If this was still a thousand dollar phone, then yeah, I might say the performance could be better, but for what this phone costs now, I think it's great. This phone has absolutely no problems performing everyday tasks such as calling, texting, browsing, watching YouTube, and things like that. It handles pretty much anything you throw at it without any problems. Even when it comes to gaming, this phone should not disappoint you. I played a few graphically intensive games like Call of Duty, and this phone seems to do everything just fine. There were no frame drops, no lag, or anything like that. But I think it's important to mention that this phone gets quite warm from the back, especially when gaming. But it's not a problem, I've noticed this with many other phones. Okay, now we'll talk about the battery life, which is probably the worst part about this phone, but 
I think it could be better and I'll explain how. So the iPhone 10 has a 2700 milliamp hour battery, which is honestly not terrible for a phone of this size. In fact, it has a bigger battery than the iPhone 10s, which came out a year after this phone. But the problem is that I normally get around four to four and a half hours screen on time, which I will say is not all that bad for a phone that is four to five years old. But I think it's really because of the battery health. This phone has 79% battery health, which is honestly quite bad, but I expect that batteries don't last forever. They degrade over time. So the older the phone gets, the worse its battery life gets. So the age of this phone is really the reason behind it's not so good battery life, in my opinion, at least. So I think getting the battery replaced is something you can do to slightly improve the battery life on your iPhone 10. And I would say five hours of screen on time is decent battery life. So if you can get that on this phone, then this will instantly become a much, much better phone in my opinion. Now, just before we talk about the cameras, I wanna tell you about X3R. Okay, so if you have never heard about them before, trust me, you need to watch this. So basically they tear down classic electronic devices and frame them as artwork. So for example, the original iPhone, the first Apple Watch, or even the classic Game Boy. And I think they look really cool. I have one right here and look at this. I feel like this is something you would find in a museum, but that's not all. They also take apart several other devices like the iPhone 5 and 5S, the iPhone 4, iPhone 7, iPhone 6, 8, and even the iPhone 10, this phone. Their products can be used for decorating offices, studios, workspaces, or literally anywhere else you'd like to put them. They're also valuable collectibles and can make awesome gifts for tech fans. But you know what I like the most? You can actually make this yourself. On their website, they also have a DIY section, so you can buy proper tools and glue to disassemble maybe one of your old phones and turn it into artwork. You can download some of these teardown templates for free, get them printed, and use any frame or buy the appropriate frame from their website and literally make this yourself at home. Now, I haven't tried doing that myself, so I don't know how hard would it be, but I think it's totally possible to do it yourself. However, if you want to just buy one that's professionally made, like this one, you can visit the first link in the description and use code TECHWALT at checkout to get 10% off your order. Also, you think I should hang this on one of the walls behind me? If so, let me know which one, the white one or the gray one, and I'll do it. Okay, finally, let's talk about the cameras. So the iPhone 10 has two 12 megapixel cameras on the back and a seven megapixel selfie camera. There's a standard wide angle camera and a 2X telephoto camera on the back. This phone can record in 4K at 60 frames per second and 1080p at 240 frames per second for slow motion. But are the cameras any good? Well, honestly speaking, the cameras are definitely one of the drawbacks of this phone. They're not terrible, but they could be better. In bright or evenly lit situations, you can get pretty good photos with a decent amount of detail, but as soon as it starts getting dark or you enter an unevenly lit situation, the cameras on this phone really start to fall apart. I say this because the dynamic range on this phone is, well, poor. The ability to take shots in low light is also pretty bad because it doesn't have night mode. This means the iPhone 10 will have a hard time capturing bright and dark areas in a photo because of the lack of dynamic range and it will struggle with low light photos because there's no night mode. Low light photos taken from this phone have very little detail because it tries to blur out the noise. So the results are not very pleasant. Also, I don't know why, but on this phone, you can't change important video recording settings within the camera app. You have to actually go inside the settings app to change them. I remember this used to be a problem and I thought Apple fixed it, but it turns out they only fixed it for iPhones that came out after this phone which is a bummer. But hey, the cameras on this phone are not just all bad. I have to say the telephoto camera on this phone is definitely something that's nice to have. It's good to have more cameras with different focal lengths because it makes the phone more versatile for photography and videography. Now the selfie camera on this phone is also okay. It should be fine for video calls, selfies and stuff like that. Basically, it's not great, but it gets the job done. And I think that's what really matters. So in conclusion, I think the iPhone 10 is still a good phone, but again, I wouldn't say it's great anymore, primarily because of the cameras and battery life. I recently reviewed the iPhone XR and man, is that phone so much better than this. It just doesn't have a great screen, but in pretty much all other areas, that phone just knocks this phone out of the water, especially battery life. And you know what? It also costs about the same as this phone, maybe just a little more. I'll also link that video in the description. I think you should watch it before buying this phone because I genuinely think that phone is a much better option than this. But that's all for this video. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and I'll see you later.